So about 13 years ago, just when analog stuff was starting to get expensive, I bought a Yamaha DX7 because they were digital and cheap. And I remember bringing it home and turning it on, looking at all the parameters and thinking, I read tutorials online, but they didn't really help. They said stuff like, look at programs other people have made. Yeah, thanks. That's like teaching carpentry by looking at retail furniture. I figured it out eventually, but I think there's an easier way. And that's what this episode is about. Alright, so you know how the majority of synthesizers have low frequency oscillators. The frequency runs below our hearing threshold, so they're not used as audio signals like regular oscillators, but their effect can be heard. When routed to a regular oscillator's pitch, the LFO's effect is heard as cyclical pitch changes. So what would happen if you could turn up the LFO's rate into the audio range? You'd stop hearing audible cycles of pitch modulation, and instead hear a constant change to the tone. Most keyboards implement subtractive synthesis. Oscillators have multiple waveforms, each one with different harmonic content, and you change tone with filters that subtract a portion of those frequencies. FM doesn't need a filter to edit tone. Modulation between simple oscillators builds complex frequencies from the ground up. Instead of controlling tone with filters, you can control tone with modulation. Back to the first example. We'll call this oscillator the modulator since we only hear its effect and not the oscillator itself. If the modulator is set to an even ratio, and that's a little convoluted, but uh, exactly half, two or four times the oscillator's pitch, then you'll add harmonic overtones. If set to a non-ratioed pitch, like 3.489 times, you add inharmonic frequencies. The sound will become dissonant. It might be a little more complicated than that, but these are good guidelines to start with. I think the frustration that new programmers have when they're, they're using FM for the first time is that they have dissonant sounds, they don't know why, and the reason is probably because they have a inharmonic ratio. Now that doesn't mean that any time you use uh, an uneven ratio, you get nasty sounds. Adding just a bit of inharmonic modulation can make a sound less sterile without making it dissonant. And since you have control over the modulator's volume, you can control how much it affects the waveform. If this seems a bit confusing, don't worry about it. This will all make sense in a couple of minutes. Just use one modulator, one oscillator, adjust the settings, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. In order to change the tone over time, you use envelopes to adjust the volume and pitch of the modulator. First, listen to how changing the modulator's volume affects the sound. It's not the same as a filter, but you can control tonal aspects in a similar way. Changing the modulator pitch yields a different result, affecting the type of overtones that are added instead of the amount. When you apply an envelope to the final oscillator, that's exactly like normal synthesis. Route to pitch, and the overall pitch changes. Volume, and the overall volume changes. And that's a good thing to remember. FM programs can have multiple modulators, stacks of them affecting each other. But look at the oscillator volume as the final VCA in an analog synth, and look at the volume and pitch settings of the modulators as filter and wave shape settings. Velocity-driven envelopes allow dynamic control over those changes. The pitch and volume of the modulator can be tracked to the keyboard as well. Tracking the depth of the modulator is similar to key tracking filter cutoff, allowing sounds to become brighter or darker as you move up and down the key range. So 
So what keyboards can you use for FM? The Nord Lead is great. It's very easy to implement, but it's a bit limited. The Novation Supernova 2 and Alesis Ion are a lot more extensive. The Nord Modulus series are even better, and that's what I've been using so far. The Yamaha DX series are tricky, but usable once you get your head around them. One thing to consider is that terminology is very different. The DX7 takes an oscillator, an envelope, and volume control, puts it all together in a package, and calls it an operator. Each voice has six of these operators, and they can perform as a modulator or carriers. They carry the modulation from modulators. The carrier provides the final waveform, the part that you hear. But outside of dedicated FM synthesizers, most are just going to give you routing options between oscillators, and you won't have to deal with that kind of terminology. And regardless, it's all transferable. Just think in terms of the basic principles. FM involves modulating the frequency of one oscillator against another oscillator. Even ratios add frequencies in the harmonic series. Non-ratios add frequencies outside of the harmonic series. Controlling the volume of the modulator will affect how loud those added frequencies are. Envelopes allow those changes to happen over time. Next episode, I'll describe how to use multiple modulators and how they work in structures known as algorithms. I'll cover the difference between linear and exponential FM, and finally, show you how you can modify and use FM in real time in a performance environment similar to how you can use traditional analog synths. In the meanwhile, experiment with a pair of oscillators. Don't use the filter if your synth has one. Force yourself to get all tonal changes from FM. In fact, you can make pretty good sounds with just a pair of FM oscillators or two operators.